My experience is not from working with parents. My experience is in Home Sweet Home, where I basically opened the home without any experience, without any training, and I took in kids every year who were basically homeless. They were all Mechal Shabbos Befrahesia. They were all, a lot of them had major drug problems, and I had no I had no experience, I had no training. I was never a mentor. I actually don't think this was a smart thing to do, come to think of it. But I just decided there are people who are homeless. There are people who are living on the street. Why are they so upset? Why are they so down? And I basically took them into my life. This was not a program. This was a house that I opened five minutes away from my home. It was open 365 days a year. And they lived there. This was their home. I had to do the intake. I had to be there for them in all kinds of crisis situations. And I really, really was drawn to them. Now, these are what's called OTD, off the derech. These are what's called addicts. These are guys who had a lot of different diagnoses of mental illness. A lot of them were thrown out of the communities. And to me, I genuinely liked them. And if you speak to them, I think they'll tell you that it's true. I had to go through a lot living with kids that were thrown out of every yeshiva that they went through and every kind of program that they went through. And I didn't want to lose them. And I don't think any of them slipped through my fingers because when they challenged me or when they acted mean to me or disgusting in, their, in that time, I had a lot of faith in them. And I think that that's what they realized, that there was somebody here who was not getting paid. Not only that, I funded the whole place. Either I raised money or I paid for a lot of it. It was about $100,000 a year just for the rent and the insurance and, the, and the, the stuff, everything, and buying them clothing and everything. And I really tried to care for them. And here's the thing that I want you to understand. I had no agenda. I had no clue what would happen because it's never been done. People have programs, wonderful programs for kids who want to come. But here you have a house and, and it's a living environment. But what happened was every single one of these kids went clean and stayed clean until today. Nobody went back to the street. I heard one kid had a short relapse, Baruch Hashem, went to a rehab, but all the kids who came here ended up staying clean, getting, getting clean and staying clean without any rehab, without any 12 steps. Not that I'm against it. I didn't know anything. I just said, listen, you guys are going to go clean. You're going to stop this, this drug stuff. I'm sure you needed it, but I'm going to give you a great life. I believe in you. And they, they did. And then one after another, they started becoming from. And it was actually bad advertisement, bad, bad advertising for me because the other kids in the street said, oh, I'm not going to that guy. He makes everybody from. And I used to tell them, I, I promise you, it was an accident. I had no tire, I had no shachos min chamarev. They did not have to keep Shabbos. You didn't, they didn't have to do anything religious. I didn't ask them to fast on Yom Kippur. One after another, they chose to, after they were functioning and after they were keeping a job and saving money and going clean, they also chose on their own that, you know what? Maybe this guy is something I want to do on my terms. And many, many, many of them actually became from. That was by accident. It wasn't my agenda. And people used to challenge me. They said, no, if it's happening, that's your agenda. I said, I promise you, God knows what's in my heart, right? It's an accident. I don't mind. I'm very happy to make as many from people from. Uh, there's six million unaffiliated Jews. Let them all be from. But that wasn't what I was here for. I was here to take people who felt unloved and uncared for and to make them feel loved and cared for. And then let the chips fall wherever it is. So many kids that were on pills, medication, stopped when I worked with them. They just stopped. They just didn't need it anymore. The psychiatrist said, oh, I don't know what happened. The diagnosis is gone. When you believe in these type of kids, right, when you believe in them, when you understand that they're at some good kids, and you stop fighting with them, a lot of good things could happen. Parents started coming to me, and they said, oh, we heard that you're successful. I want to throw my kid out of the house, my first parent. I want to throw my kid out of the house. I said, okay, let's talk. I spoke to them, and basically I showed them. I said, why are you so angry at this kid? This kid has a reason that they're not conforming. They're not, he's not a rebel. He's not bad. And then by the time I was done, it turns out that was for what was for me, Devarim Shutim, was for them, Grace Chedushim. They couldn't believe it. They didn't throw the kid out. I was like, okay, that's good. If you don't throw the kid out, not homeless, not going to be an orphan, probably saved his life from suicide and heavy, hardcore drugs, and who knows what could happen. Maybe good things are going to happen. Maybe he'll be connected to the family. How is that a bad thing? It's a good thing. The second person called me up, same thing, we're throwing our kid out. I started getting calls from dozens and dozens of people. I was told to throw my kid out of the house. And I started training parents to believe in their kid, to believe that your kid is good. Now, I call them kids in pain. Why? You know why? Because in my experience, I dealt with rebels, drug addicts, cool guys driving fast sports cars, atheists, people who said, I don't need this thing, and whatever, tough people. 
my experience, my personal experience, almost always by the time I worked with them, it came out that they had a story of pain. So I call them KIPS, I call them kids in pain to awaken to parents and to the community that we have to care for this population and not reject them and throw them out. And I say this, you can do an x-ray of my heart that I bleed for these kids. I bleed for the thousands of kids that we rejected. Now, there's another issue. I tell parents that if you want your kid to be from, you should do twisted parenting. You should show them support and love. The kids hear about this on the street. They say, oh, they're loving me. It's a trick. It's not a trick. You have to love your kids because you have to love your kids. But a lot of parents in the beginning, when they come to me, they can't handle that. They're saying, I got to throw my kid out of the house because he's not, he's Michal Shabbos. To that parent, I answer, well, you really care about Shabbos? Guess what? The Baal Shem Tov said, and the Chazanish said, and a lot of other G'daylam said, that if you're ever dreaming that your kid should be from, you anyway have to love him. That means besides for the fact that you should love your kid because this is your flesh and blood, besides for the fact that you should love your kid because I am telling you, uh, the research done, they say that 90% of drug addicts were sexually abused and went through other trauma and abuse as children. So you have a kid who's a drug addict, you're throwing him out of the house, most likely the kid is hurting. And there's a lot of other research that I teach parents that most of these kids are hurting. So I tell the parent who says, well, I don't care, and they're not human. Love your kid as a human. And if the God part and the Torah part is getting in the way, I say, no, 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 no. The Baal Shem Tov said, love your kid, who's not from. The Chazanish said, love your kid, who's not from. Because that's the only hope you have. So really, my message to parents is, of course it's unconditional love, but not really. Because when a kid is bad, you say, I love you unconditionally no matter what you are, even though you're a disappointment to me and you're bad. But that's not my feeling. My feeling is that I found that kips off the Derek population, the ones that I know who were considered rough and tough, are the nicest, sweetest kids that would die for one, one another. Yes, they're very challenging to us. They were hurt. If you understand that, you'll understand why my heart bleeds for them. I'm always trying to learn from them. If we had the Ahavas Yisrael that they have, Mashiach would be here already. They care. They care about the other kid in the class who gets punished by the Rebbe for no reason. It hurts them. They have a big heart that is hurting for any kind of hypocrisy and any kind of injustice that is done. So do I say that the way to make them from is to love them? I do. You know why? Because it's true. Should you love your kid because you want to make him from? What are you, nuts? You're not a care of program. This is your child. You have to not love your kid because it's the right thing to do and because they're not bad and because they're not rebels and because it's your job. And Hashem wants you to love your kids because that's the kid that Hashem gave you. For those of you that can't understand how can you love a kid who's not from, we have to throw him out of the house and sit and say Kaddish. To them I tell you, well, there's no chance of them coming from if you do that. So you want to do it for a wrong reason? That's the reason to do it. So my message to, to the world out there is that a lot of people are getting mixed messages from me. And I know that some things that I say are going to hurt parents, some things I say are going to hurt the mainstream, and some things I say are going to hurt kips, are going to hurt off to their population. They're not all the same. I can't put them all in the same thing. I'm just giving you over my experience of kids that I worked with. Kids who would take a bullet for me and kids who I would take a bullet for. That if you bet on them, if you want to take a gamble, bet on them. Be good to them. They're not B-A-D. That's really been my main message. Don't throw your kids out of the house. And I will continue to tell my message to anybody that wants to hear it, that if we, 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 the from people, so-called, right? If we embrace if we embrace and the stuff that I said tonight from Geshen Edelstein about not looking down at people, don't think you know everything about everybody and that when they're misbehaving that your answer is I'm going to cut you out. That's not a Jewish concept. And I hope that we can clarify things over time. My main wish is that every child should be home and should feel loved, should feel supported, should feel understood. And a lot of these kids, I have to say, are in so much pain that if we would inject inside of us as parents and community, if we would inject inside a syringe into our veins, for one minute, you would go arois from Caleb. You would go nuts. A lot of them were hurt very badly. I don't like to say this because the, as a community, the OTD community says, oh, don't say that we're all hurting. Don't say, I know people in the community. I know people who are part of their community. They know it's true. They know it's true. But regardless of whether they're making their life choice this way, 
or whether somebody else made the life choice to push in that way. Our job is to love these kids. Why? It's your child. It's our brother and sister. We're not meant to look down on other people. And also, if they're hurting, Allah has kama v'kama, we should be there for them. We should be there with love and understanding. And the understanding is, I don't need to understand, I trust you. Unconditional trust. That's what we need to have. Unconditional loyalty. I believe in you. Where were you parents when this kid was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Didn't you see that this was a great kid? Most of these kids were our top kids. Sweet, nice, normal person. I raised you. All of a sudden at 15 and 16 and 17, I turn on you because of the way that you're behaving. Obviously, if you're misbehaving, you're hurting. And if you have those eyes of compassion and wisdom, Rachmanus, Racham Chanun, Kale, are all the midas of Hashem that we're supposed to have. Don't just leave it for God and beg God for it. You have it for your children, for your families, and for everyone in Klai's soul. Then the hypocrisy will go down also. Our children who are hurting will see that we are actually good people. We want what's best for everybody. Get rid of the judgmentalism. Get rid of the hypocrisy. The Ezra Hashem will have happy homes. Now, what's going to happen when your kid is home and happy? I can tell you. A lot of the drug use that's hurting them and plaguing them, these kids want to go clean more than anybody. You'll be helping them. A lot of them who have diagnosis for all kinds of mental illness, that they really want to be healthy and they want to feel good about themselves, you're helping them. And the ones who have spiritual problems, because deep down they're thinking, you know what, maybe I would want to be from one day, but I can't right now. So don't abandon them. Don't cut them out of your will and out of your life and out of your heart. And certainly don't do so in the name of God. And some people are offended because I call them chayla sheyesh by sakana. I call them pikuach nefesh. I call them chayla nefesh and we daven for them. Please understand. Please. Please. My experience is that they're hurting. In the OTD community, what? They don't have suicides every day? They don't know that they're hurting? We're fooling ourselves now? I'm very close to them. I'm telling you, I know these, these kids out there, they, they know that I love them and I care about them. They know that. And I, I'm sorry if I hurt them. And I'm sorry if it's hard to hear. And then they say, even if, even if I say everything right, they'll say, oh, he's lying and he has an agenda. I, can, I can't help you if you don't trust me. You don't know me, you don't trust me. I can't help you. But tell me, OTD people, tell me, how many of your friends were molested? Tell me. Tell me, not about you, your friends. You know how many guys that I, I did the work, I did the research. You know how many kids or adults, young adults who off the derech in the OTD community that I asked them, tell me about your friends. Without mentioning names, just how many of your friends are hurting? So most of them are hurting, right? I would say personally, I never met the kid and everyone's gonna say, yeah, it's me. You know, I had a perfectly wonderful life and chose to, to go off the derech. But if you did, if you're that one person, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the ones burning their flesh. I'm talking about the ones cutting their flesh. I'm talking about the ones who have all kinds of mental illness diagnosis. And by the way, from the parents who come to me, almost all of that goes away. Because your kids are not mentally ill. And for those kids that are off the dark taking pills and all of that, if you have love and acceptance and support from your parents and your family, who knows what's left of that. You're not that sick. And the first thing that happens in the therapy world is that we say, cut them out. Rules, consequences, boundaries. From people, from parents who live and die for God, you should know God wants your kid home. You know how many top people, top poiskim, big rebus send people to me and tell the parents quietly, you got to keep your kid home, even if this and even if that, no matter what, don't throw them away. Rebel Yashiv. I mean, think about it. The, the, the real tzaddikim understand it. So yeah, we understand you. And you don't like to be categorized, and you don't like to be like, oh, this is an epidemic. Yes, an epidemic. We buried 200 kids last year, under 35 years old. Buried. Parents burying children is not an epidemic. 30, 40 years ago, were there parents burying children every day? And that's only under 35, and that's only what we know, what we call suicide and overdose, and it's not all the aneurysms and heart attacks, and it's not all the thousands of kids who want to die and who tried and didn't succeed, or didn't even try, but they really don't want to live. Not an epidemic? They're not chaylim? A chayl is someone who's sick. So yes, if there's someone out there who went off the derech without any pain, no mental issues, no agony, no hurt, nothing, I'm not talking about you. Go, Gesundheit. Enjoy yourself. 
I'm not talking about you. You're not a chayla. You're not a chayla. You're not sick. You're not sick. You're not hurting. You're not in pain. No problem. But most is my, it's my experience. Most. And it's not just my experience. It's my experience with other people who have experience. And it's my experience with kids who are off the derech and part of the OTD community who tell me, I feel so bad for this girl that she's hurting so much and she was molested by her brothers. I feel so bad for this guy. And he was... And this one had a learning disability. It's supposed to throw out yeshiva and rejection and rejection and rejection and rejection and rejection, rejection, rejection. We feel bad for them. So I know what's going on. They can't deny it. But it's not fair to label them to say that they're mashuga. No, they're not. They're very normal. They're normal and they're trustworthy people. And we, we have to start building our trust into them. I, I hope that I clarified some of the terminology and where I'm coming from. And if not, I'll get feedback and we'll do it again. We'll keep on trying to clarify it. And we'll keep on trying to grow together, make mistakes. We will make mistakes. But my goal is to create an environment where the child who's off the derech should feel comfortable and safe in their home. And so to my dear brothers and sisters from the OTD community, you have in me a great friend. When I started Home Sweet Home, I had no idea why you went off, you're in pain, you're not in pain. I accepted you, believe Shalom, into my life, into my heart, into my, into my family. Without any preconceived notions, I just knew that you're good. I trusted you, that you are good. And I still do. You may not like everything I say, you may not like how I say it, but I'm trying my best to bridge the gap. You are the most misunderstood population because in the last 20 years kids started leaving the fold and people didn't know why and people didn't know what they didn't think that you have a story people went ahead and they said you know how many hundreds of kids were thrown out of home and I'm reversing that for the parents who want to listen to me and for the community who wants to listen to me and I'm trying to speak their language and I'm trying to take my understanding that you are good I do believe that most of you are hurting I don't mean to generalize, I shouldn't generalize, it's a mistake. I'm learning on the job. But my heart is with you. I believe in you. I believe in you, I believe that you're good. And I believe that most of you were hurt. And I just wish the one bracha that I have for you, and those who know me know that this is what I've always said to them, I wish that you will find a way to live this life, not just to survive, but to thrive, to have internal happiness, to have inner peace, to be able to sleep at night without nightmares, to be able to face the world without feeling guilty. I wish that everybody in Kal Yisrael, in your communities that you're from, would accept you 100%, believe in you, love you, not be angry with you, but understand that us as from people, we can't judge other people. I'm always giving that message. So my dear brothers and sisters, please understand that we're learning on the job. I'm sorry for your pain and I'm sorry if I caused you more pain. My job right now that I feel is to bridge the gap, is to create an understanding in the community that our job, whether you look at it as your Ruchni calling or as just pure humanity, is to not reject. Rejection is poison. How many suicides were because of rejection? How much drug use is because of rejection? The psych wards are full of Jewish kids and they don't belong there. You know how I know that? Because from 300 families plus who came to me and a lot of those kids beforehand that were, were ended up in, in, the, in the psych wards and the psych wards and the psych wards and Atzal and Shomrim, I never had one kid uh, when the parents are under my care, who ended up in the psych ward. What does that mean? It means that those kids who are in the psych ward might be there for no reason. I want you to feel love, real love and real true acceptance. That's going to give you the ability to fight whatever demons you have inside of you. Whatever pain that you've gone through. You deserve the support of your parents and your family and the understanding that even if we don't understand you, we trust you, we have loyalty to you, we have trust, we have trust in you and who you are. That's how I feel inside. And I hope that over time that we're going to be able to stop the blood from running in the streets 
There shouldn't be any suicides. There shouldn't be any drug overdoses. We have to try harder to understand those who are struggling and on the part that we don't understand, to trust them.